Sexling dominant, page 59, questions 1A. Okay, and this is the last of our four modes of inheritance. So if we take a look at this, they talk about CH, also known as werewolf syndrome. And we've seen that in a previous chapter where uh, there's dark hair covered over the entire body. This is a very rare sex-linked, X-linked dominant condition. There's a small isolated community in Mexico that is inundated with a lot of these, uh, well, predominantly females, and we'll see that when we take a look at some of the evidence. So here's a pedigree for that. Uh, again, because it's a sex linked, got to use X's and Y's, and we use some superscript, right? Now, in this case, CH is dominant, okay? So rare condition. These are probably one of the toughest ones to determine or diagnose. Uh, but we're going to give you some really good tools and pieces of evidence to be able to uh, to come up with this. So in this case, if I have the mutation on the sex X chromosome, uh, I don't care what this other one is. This is going to be an individual, either male or female, depending on if it's X or Y. Uh, this is going to be an individual CH. It's dominant over the normal. Okay. So uh, we'll give the normal. Uh, just a X. So if I'm a normal female, I must have two normal XX chromosomes. So that would be a normal female. Normal male. Okay, now please pay extra attention to this question. You're going to see questions like this very similar on your on your uh, unit exam. Okay, so if I know somebody's if affected, especially, uh, well, let's go over some of the evidence. Occurs in every generation, okay? We see that, check. That suggests that it's dominant. Uh, heterozygous are affected, okay? So if we take a look at this individuals, individuals one, two, they had some kids with the disorder, some kids without. That's kind of the determining factor on whether or not that individual is heterozygous. And in this case, the heterozygous individual does have the disorder, makes it dominant. Here's the big, big one though, or one of the big ones. Overwhelmingly females are affected. And if you can see in this pedigree, we have overwhelmingly females. Only one male is actually affected. That cries sex link dominant. Reason for that, female have two X's. So in this case, it's actually a disadvantage having two X's because if only one of them has the mutation CH attached to it, she has the disorder. Okay, so it's a, it's a whammy, double whammy if you have two X's. Okay, uh, the other really big piece of evidence, and this is the must one. This is a great one. I love this one. When we look at our video that summarizes the flow charts of all this evidence for the four modes of inheritance, this is the one I really like to highlight. If you have an affected male, like this individual right here, all affected males must have an affected mom. Not maybe, not sometimes, but must all the time. And that's true for this affected male. The other piece of that is every affected male must have all affected daughters. They must be affected because he's giving the daughter the X with the CH. Okay, so all of them must be. So let's take a look at that. Look at the line. Now be careful with this. Look at the line. It's attached to this female. She's affected. Perfect. How about this female here? She's not affected, but she's not attached to the, to the mate. Right, So she's not a product of mating between individuals 2, 4, and 2, 5. She just married one of their sons. So be careful with that. This one has a line. Affected. This one has a line. Affected. Not affected, but not attached. Just married into the family. Look at this one. Attached. Affected. That's true. So that is, I love that piece of evidence because it's a must. All affected males must have affected mums and have all affected daughters. If just one of those daughters weren't, it's not sex link dominant. Okay, so because of that, we can fill in lots of this here now. She's now, let's take a look at this male. He's just an XY. This female X, she has to have a CH because she's affected. But what's her other one? Take a look at their offspring. 
They had some without it, some with it. She must be heterozygous. And in this case, heterozygous means you have the disorder, has to be dominant, but she is heterozygous. This male here, this is gonna get a little ugly here, uh, just because we're running out of room here, but you can see, hopefully catch on to this, has to have a C or X with a CH because he is affected and his Y is the other one. That female, just a little X, a little X, she's unaffected. Okay, X, 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 Y, X with the CH, and dad was unaffected, so dad gave her just a regular X, normal X, sex chromosome. So she's heterozygous as well. Okay. Now I'm just wondering uh, if we should do any more, or if that kind of sums it up there. All these females here are heterozygous. They have to have the CH because they're all affected. But look at mom. Mom could only give them a normal X. So all these females are heterozygous. Okay, these females are heterozygous. They have to have the CH, and again, we show the dominant allele first. So in this case, CH is dominant, so it has to go first. And uh, the other one has to be an X. Why? Because look at dad up here. Dad was just XY. He's unaffected. What did he give that daughter? He gave her the normal X chromosome. And same with this one. XCH, X. So hopefully you get the drift here. Same with that. Look at this guy. He's unaffected. That's what he's given these females. But they're affected. If you have any questions, let me know. But I think that's what we'll do for now. And uh, I can... Uh, help address any issues that you might have in an email. Thanks.